The first step, you need to set up your control and uh, process object system. That means you need to get ready for your process object system. You need to prepare the analog input and the sensors and the analog output that is the actuator control the process object, as well as the control system, analog input and analog output channels. Also, we'd better prepare the HMI system that is the monitoring, especially for the data record and the data trend. Uh, in my video, I'm using Siemens controller that is a S7-1200 controller. In my system, I'm using S7-1215 controller that is a S7-12 series controller. And in this controller, it built in two analog voltage channel and two analog current output channel. And because in my system, I'm going to use 0 to 10 voltage analog input and analog output. So that's why I config one additional signal board. That signal board, I can config the current or switch to the voltage output. Regarding the process object system, I'm using one heater and a fan cooling system. I made it this system by myself, as shown in the screen. I designed the circuit boards so that I can use the 0 to 10 volts to control and regulate the speed of the fan. And in this uh, heater and uh, cooling system, I'm using a heat resistor to generate the heat and uh, using the fan to control the the cooling flow air to control the temperature in this uh, small zone. And then to measure the temperature, I'm using the PT100 RTD and uh, connect to this sensor to a transmitter. And this transmitter can transfer to zero to 10 volts. And uh, I'm using the analog input zero to 10 volts to measure the temperature. That is my whole system, control system and the process object. Other than this, we also need uh, two features from your control system. One is an uh, online trend, one is a uh, data record. The online trend function can help us to have an over picture on our process behavior. For example, the step response, right? We need to have an over picture to see how quick and how slow our process changing. Another function, so the data record, because we are going to record the step response and uh, import those data into the MATLAB to generate and to identify the process model. Both are function, so usually we can use the HMI to implement those two features, or some PLC already built in those functions. For example, this S7-1200 Siemens controller, it built in the online curve. Also, it has a data record function. That's why I use this small controller. It's really convenient. Other than those, I highly recommend you are using one controller that controller support SEL programming language. That's because after we used the MATLAB to generate or identify the transfer function of the process model, and we will implement this model to our PLC. And to implement those uh, transfer function into our PLC, so that uh, transfer function will transfer to a Z equation. So to implement those Z equation, if your controller support SEL language, so because that programming style is kind of like a C, there are a lot of equations into that function block. So if your controller supports the SEL, that's more convenient for you to program in that. And especially, uh, I will explain from one website, we can download those uh, sample function block. If your controller support SEL, so basically you do not need to pay too much effort to implement those functions. All right, let's do a wrap up. So in the first step, we need to set up your process object system as well as the controller system. And also you need to set up the analog input that is a sensor, get the signal from the process object. Also, you need to set up the analog output that is uh, the control, the actuator to your process object. And other than those, your monitoring system also need a data train and the data record function. All right, after you set up the system, let's shift to the next step. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up.
If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.